Hello, my friends. Welcome again to the Midweek Encouragement. It's a joy to be with you today and to continue our little series on Psalms that Calm. And I hope this is a blessing to you. If you have your Bible, open to Psalm 121 uh, for, for today. Um, psalm 121 is a, is a phenomenal psalm reminding us that God constantly watches over us. He is always there. It's a hope-filled reminder that we can fully depend on God for help. He's constantly watching over us, protecting our coming and our going. Let's read this together. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where do the, does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. What tremendous words of encouragement. Let's, uh, let's dissect this. Let's take it apart, see what God's actually saying. This is, uh, you'll notice under, under the title Psalm 121, a little phrase called a song of ascents. Now, not ascent in saying, okay, okay, not that kind of ascent, but ascent as in going upstairs or going, uh, climbing a mountain, literally, is what it's talking about. Um, it, th this, is, this is a psalm that was used as the people approached Jerusalem. You'll always see every place in the Bible, you go up to Jerusalem because Jerusalem is built on a mountain and from every direction, north, south, east, west, you approach Jerusalem by going up. And so as the people, as the people ascended the hill, it is a psalm of ascent, all right? And as they got closer and closer, they would sing this song um, uh, as, as they went up. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. This psalm was actually written during the Babylonian captivity, and, and one of the, uh, the, the, the author of this psalm was actually longing to see, once again, the hills, the mountains of Jerusalem, longing in his heart I lift up my eyes. I want to see home. I want to see God's city. I want to see where God birthed me. And he said, I, I, I lift up, I longingly lift up my eyes to the mountains of Jerusalem uh, as I approach the holy city. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Um, as uh, at, 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 in Psalm chapter 3, um, the, the psalmist says, He will answer me from his holy mountains, talking here about, uh, about Jerusalem. And so recognizing that Jerusalem is the city of God, it's the dwelling place of God, if you want to, uh, and that God's help as they would go to worship in the temple, as they would go to sacrifice at the temple, uh, the uh, presence of God would be so real to them. Where does my help come from? That is recognizing human weakness. And um, then he goes on and answers that, not from Jerusalem, my help comes from God. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So 
he asks the question, recognizing human weakness. And you see, as long as I am satisfied with my strength, as long as I'm content with my strength, I will always be weak. But he says here, my help comes from the Lord, recognizing divine help. And if I trust God's strength instead of my strength, I'll always be satisfied because God pours his strength into me in order to help me. And I will always be strong in God's strength. Verses three and four, he will not let your foot slip as you're walking up the hill. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God is a wakeful, watchful keeper, taking care of us, meeting our needs, and making sure that we have everything that's necessary to live for him. He says he will not slumber. The picture here is a catnap. God never just dozes off. He doesn't, not only does he not just doze off, he also doesn't fall into a deep sleep. And that's the, that's the contrast there. Not a cat nap, not a deep sleep. The God who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God watches over you. Verse number five. He's the shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon harm you by night. God watches over us. He's a shade at your right hand. Now, when we stood in front of the Jesus picture a week or two back, we talked about standing close enough to God that his shadow falls over us. That's exactly what he's talking about here. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. God will stand that close to us if we'll allow him to do that. But we have to allow him to. He doesn't, he doesn't invade our personal space. God says, ask me, ask me, and I'll answer you. Call to me and I will answer you. God wants us to stand that close to him if we'll allow him to stand that close to us. In that shadow, we enjoy delight of being near God. We enjoy the assurance of his protection. We enjoy the refreshment of the shade, the shadow from his person, and we enjoy his protection. For a number of years, we lived out in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is actually in the desert. Uh, it's a high desert. It's at 5,000 feet above sea level. But there's no humidity. It's way different from the south. So much so that, that when you if, you, if you take a thermometer and take a temperature in the sunshine and then step into a shade, there's an actual temperature difference. And so when, you, when, when, when we would step under the shadow of some of the trees in our yard, there was a literal temperature difference. And this is, this is protecting, uh, protecting us from the sun in the day and, 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 he, uh, and, and the moon at night. He says, uh, the sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. He, he talked about in verse 5 there, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. You see, the right hand was the working hand. And so what, what the psalmist is telling us here is God is watching over us. He's the shade. He's close enough to shade your working hand. So go on about your daily activities. Go on about your work. God will protect you and give you success because the sun won't harm you by day 
the moon won't harm you at night. God is going to give us protection and success. Verse number seven, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The, watch, uh, the Lord will watch over your go coming and going, both now and forevermore. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life, your eternal life, your physical life as well, but your eternal life also. He's watching over all of our life. He will protect us from harm, from Satan's attacks, whether it's an open attack or a sneaky ambush. And God promised he would watch over us, protect us from all harm. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. God's our protector. He's our comforter. Whether we work in the morning days or whether we work in, uh, in, in, in the nighttime, doesn't matter if we're working day shift or night shift. God is our protector. He's our comforter. And the picture here is ages and stages of life. The Lord will watch over our going out. In, our, in the morning days of our youthfulness, when we used to go to work every day, God would watch over us then. And our coming in, our coming back home to rest during our senior years. You see, God is watching over us both now and forevermore, during our present days and throughout our eternity. This is protection for life. We're in better hands than with all state. Thank you, God. May I pray for you? Oh, dear Father, thank you that you go before us and that you cover us from behind. Thank you that you're in our midst. Our future is secure in the place that you're preparing for us. Today, we choose faith over fear. We choose to set our eyes on you and not on our circumstances. We choose joy over despair. We choose peace over worry. Silence the lies that the enemy is spreading around us. Give us the awareness that we need to, to step over the traps that the enemy is setting for us. We trust you to protect our way and bring us safely through the trials that we're facing. God, your word brings hope to our souls and comfort to our hearts. Remind us of your strength in us and through us. May we today see glimpses of your glory and your blessing along the way as we seek after you, as we spend time in your word, as we spend time in prayer. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining today for Midweek Encouragement. I love you. I look forward to seeing you again soon.